Hey right, guys, welcome to another Maintenance Monday. I haven't done one of these in a while, but they've been highly requested, so I'm gonna get back into them. I'll try to do as many of these as I can. Today, we are talking about marine engine cooling. Most people are familiar with how their car cools their engine, right? You have a closed circuit system of antifreeze and water mixed together, and it basically, it circulates kind of around the engine, right? So there's little areas where the water flows over the engine and comes back to your radiator, and your radiator takes the outside air and the coolant goes through these little fins and the air cools off the the fluid as it goes through those fins because there's a lot of surface area and then circulates back through the engine. Well obviously on a boat you can't do that because you don't have a lot of air coming in to flow over the engine and over the air radiator. So that's why in a marine engine that you have what's called a heat exchanger and that's what this is. And I'm going to be changing that on one of my generators today. Even though it's a generator it works the same way as your traditional marine motor. So it takes raw seawater, just the seawater that's surrounding your boat right now and it you have a pump, an impeller pump, that takes that and, and pushes it through this heat exchanger. And then you have your coolant on this side as well. So your coolant goes through here as well. And inside is just like a radiator. They, the fluids don't mix, but they run next to each other through little fins and they the raw water, outside water, cools down the coolant water and it basically heats up, the you know, exchanges heat exchange, right? It takes the cooler seawater and cools off the coolant and then the coolant kind of heats up the seawater and then the coolant goes and circulates through the motor and then the raw water goes out with the exhaust and generally is pumped overboard. So that's why when you start up your engine, one thing you want to go check for is you want to look at the exhaust of your engine and make sure water is being pumped out through the exhaust of your engine. If you don't have water coming out, that could mean maybe you had a pump failure at an impeller failure or a blockage of this. One thing to always consider is that you have your seawater coming in right here. Well, it has a little impeller pump. That impeller pump has a little impeller that's made of rubber. And those are designed to eventually break down and when they do, they might lose a fin or two and it comes in here. And then that's when you would need to open up this little clean out and make sure that you have all the little pieces of that rubber out because it could be blocking the flow of the raw water through the rest of this heat exchanger. Another thing we have here is a grounding line. Just most of the engine needs to be grounded, right? So you have that. And then you have your zinc. A zinc is basically a sacrificial piece of metal. It corrodes a lot faster than other metals. And so when it when it's in contact with seawater and if there's an electrical any kind of any electrical charge over this engine, which can happen quite a bit, you have a poor ground or something like that, it'll want to corrode your engine. Whereas if you're using the zinc, it'll corrode instead. So I think that's what's happened to my old heat exchanger is that my boat sat in the water water for a long time, untouched, unused, and these are supposed to be replaced every year or two. And it could have been five, six years since this was replaced. And what happens is all this metal in here corrodes and will kind of corrode and block up the flow. So I think that's what's happened to my old heat exchanger. So I bought a brand new one. Uh, I'm not sure how much it was. It was like $150, they're not too bad, $200, and I'm gonna change that out today. Luckily, my generator is pretty easy to get to right here, uh, and that's why one thing I like about this boat, my other generator inside is very hard to get to, but this one is easy, so if I ever need to work on it, it's easy. So my generator here has this soundproofing box around it, right? because you don't want to sit there and listen to your loud generator all the time. Most generators will have a soundproof box around it. Um, uh, your Most of your motors will not. Maybe the motor enclosure will have a, a soundproofing around it, but the motor itself doesn't. So, But in order to get at my heat exchanger for this, I have to take this sound deadening box apart to get at it. <sighs> One really good tip whenever you're working on something, take a picture of the components that you're about to take apart before you put it back together, or before you take it apart, because you can forget what goes where. Another thing that you'll want to do every time, anytime you're working on something where water comes in or out of the boat, is close off the seacock. Right? That stops water from coming in through a hole in the boat. It's called a seacock and it closes that off. And mine for this generator is right down here. So when the valve handle is in line with the, basically the hose, that means it's open. And when the valve handle is perpendicular to the, the line, it's closed. So I'm gonna close this. 
So each of these little hose inlets and outlets here, uh, you would connect with uh, your hoses, obviously, and then what are called hose clamps. They're basically little like spiral worm drive uh, metal that kind of tightens up as you screw on it. There's two ways to undo it. You can either use a uh, flathead screwdriver or better yet, use a ratchet. I think it's 5 16 in most cases. Yeah, it's a 5 16 in most cases, but uh, you may have to adjust it. Uh, the flathead will slip off and I've jabbed my fingers a million times whereas this stays on there and it's a lot easier to, to uh, take off. The next step was to disconnect all my hoses. All right, so when I do this, I am gonna lose all my coolant out, so I'm gonna have to replace that coolant, just FYI. But it's something you should do every now and again anyway, is a coolant flush, uh, just make sure it's uh, working properly. You know, this stuff can degrade over time and heat. In this case, the uh, heat exchanger is only held together by one little metal strap, so I'm gonna undo that, and then I'll be ready to pull it all out. There we go, there's the old one. I'll tell you what, why don't we open this thing up and we can take a look at what the insides look like. Yeah, just as I feared, I'll sh let me get a light here and show you, but you can see that there's tubing going all the way through this. That would be where the raw water goes through inside the tubes and then comes out the other side is pumped out, whereas the fresh water, the coolant mixes in and goes around the outside of the tubes and cools off. Uh, but uh, you can see that on the in, on the headed end, those all those little tubes are nice and clear. You can see all the way through. But coming out the other side, some of them are closed off completely, and only maybe half of them are uh, you know open all the way. The rest of them are somewhat restricted. And you can see that the zinc in here is totally gone. So it was corroding because of probably the electrolysis. And you can see debris in here from that happening. Okay, so now that I've got the other one out, and I'm thinking that was probably part of the problem, um, I'm gonna just replace the new one. So basically, I just hook up the hoses, or restrap it back down in the same place, and hook up the hoses in the same place, and it should be ready to go. It already comes with the uh, zinc installed. Um, it's got a few extra parts to it that aren't, because this, this heat exchanger will work on multiple different variants of this, but uh, this one works great. All right, last thing I'm gonna do, well, almost the last thing I'm gonna do is fill the uh, coolant side back up with brand new coolant. And then after I do that, I will turn on the uh, seacock to make sure we got raw water flow in there. One thing I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna let this run after I get it going. I'm gonna let it run for, you know, 45 seconds a minute, or just 45 seconds or so. Uh, let all the coolant fill in all this there may be some voids of coolant in there and then shut it down uh, and then refill up this chamber again make sure there's it's totally topped off on fluid you don't want to run it too long because you don't want it to get hot because um, then everything expands when it's hot and you might blow up you don't want to do that all right so i'm going to turn off the seacock turn on the seacock and then i'm ready to test fire this thing all right i'm just going to double check i've got everything connected uh because i disconnected stuff here make sure i didn't bop anything and then I'm gonna give this thing a test shot here without enclosing the, uh, putting the closure back on. I wanna see if there's any leaks because you know, I reconnected some hoses, right? Okay, like I said, now I'm just gonna it's not hot, I only let it run for about 30 seconds. I'm gonna open this up, and yeah, there's a little bit of gap now. I can put some in here. Yeah, I didn't put much in there. So now, before I really put the box back together, I'm going to uh, let this thing run for 20, 30 minutes, make sure it doesn't get hot. It's hard to tell from this boat because uh, the exhaust for that generator is right at the water line. It looks to me like it's pumping water out, but it's kind of hard to tell. So I'm gonna let the engine get warm for a little bit and then I can stick my hand down there and then I can feel as the water coming out hot, then I know it's, uh, you know, might test it. Don't stick your whole hand in there and burn your hand. It shouldn't be that hot though. Uh, but I'm gonna test to make sure that water coming out is warm. 
All right, so there you go. That is uh, the replacing the heat exchanger on this generator. It's got a button up the F soundproof housing and we're good to go. Another issue that you might have is your impeller, which I've gone on a previous video and I will do one of those uh, the next time I need to replace my impeller. Thanks for tuning in to Maintenance Monday by The Sailing Duels. If you like more of this content, please give it a like and a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.